Moving space to the cloud? That's what Cubos Corporation is doing with their cloud-based satellite software. Find out more in today's episode. Three, two, one. Welcome to Your Space Journey, where we venture into the future of space exploration. Your journey begins now. Hello, thanks so much for joining me today. In this episode, we speak with Tyler Browder, CEO and founder of Cubos, a satellite software company. Tyler joins us today to discuss how their company's cloud-based mission control platform called Major Tom helps operators take care of every aspect of a satellite's flight software, from mission design and onboard software to hardware testing and mission operations in the cloud. Your Space Journey. Tyler, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, I appreciate uh, letting me come on and, and talk. Well, you know, you've got some exciting things to do. Your company just came off last month. Pretty some exciting news. You watched what four customers launch six satellites on two different rockets all on the same day. It was five customers on five six customers. Uh, six <laughs> five customers, six uh, satellites on on two different rockets on one day. Yes. Either way, uh, it's amazing. Now, before we talk about your awesome software, tell me just how you felt generally on that day. That's incredible. You know, I actually was describing it to one of the customers yesterday. Uh, they they had this feeling of like watching it go up in space, then waiting, wa- using my software to let it come in and let the first data come back for the spacecraft. And I can't see what they see. I see the back end that there's a data coming, but I don't know who it was or what it was. And so I, it's this mix of motion. Uh, it, honestly, I want to bug my customers and ask them how it's going, but they also are really busy and don't really need me bothering them. And so mm-hmm. I actually don't want them to talk to me because that means something went wrong, right? And so, right. Uh, you know, it's kind of this really isolated, uh, you know, I work out of my home and I'm like, ah, I'm just here. <laughs> you know, so it's a weird emotional uh, experience, but it was well, a really great day. What a dream come true, though, because if I remember right, uh, Kubo's your company, you formed that, I think, just a few years ago in 2015, somewhere around That's there? right. That's right. 2015. All right. Yeah. Um, give us the, the nutshell version of how you're moving space to the cloud. Tell us about Kubo's. Yeah. So Kubo's has been on kind of a long journey. We started out actually in flight software, uh, working on board the spacecraft. Uh, last year, we pivoted wow. hard to the cloud and doing mission control software. Um, and really, traditionally, space, if you're going to operate a spacecraft, you do it on a server in a closet, and you right. have a direct line to your, your ground station. And really, that's not scalable for the number of spacecraft we're seeing. It's not scalable for the data we're seeing. Mm-hmm. So we, we find it more efficient, better development experience, um, redundancy is better if we just move things to the cloud. So we're kind of really kind of leading the charge on adopting space uh, and, sorry, adopting cloud in a space environment. See, and I, that had to be incredible. And I just wanted to find for those viewers out there who might not know, just the cloud is basically your, your computers that are somewhere else. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And they're distributed. So we can work off lots of different. So even one thing goes down, we can easily move to a different uh, computer that's over in a different spot and keep everything up and running, right? There's not a single point of failure like there is on an on-premise service. Exactly. And that's what amazed me because I thought the same thing as you. You know, I grew up and you always pictured, you know, mission control and and all these launch companies. There weren't near as many back then, but, you know, they had the computers, they were siloed out and never even occurred of taking that and doing a a cloud-based solution for it. So I imagine you came up with a little resistance when you did that. How how was that? Sure, sure. We we still get resistance, uh, but the advantages are just overwhelming, right? Not only for the scalability and the reliability, but, you know, what we do is that straight, you know, telling the satellite what to do, getting the data back. We have a direct line to the satellite. And then you have all these other services applications in order to actually do your mission, right? Well, if you're taking images or scientific or whatever, and those are always been isolated in these data silos. So with the cloud, we're really allowed to use APIs to interconnect and exchange data and make it much more of a connected uh, ecosystem instead of these discrete individual silos. And it's just a much better experience uh, for our customers and then their customers. And it's just this ongoing chain. One thing I also love, uh, Tyler, is the name of your platform. 
Major Tom. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, you know, space is really serious. You know, you got this, this like, you want this cool factor and I, you know, I'm kind of goofy. And so, you know, and I'm, my background's in music, like, like growing up, I wanted to be a rock star. And so it just made sense to do something. And then this, you know, space oddity, the song and, uh, you could tell the David Bowie fans because they'll say, does it Major Tom die in the song? Oh, you're focusing on the wrong details here. Wrong detail. <laughs> wrong detail. Just come back over here. Let's talk about this over there. And so it's anyway, it's it's a fun name. It sticks with people. Oh, I, I think it's great. And if I if I had the money, I would have licensed it for this episode right here. But <laughs> you know how that goes. I do. Now, music wise, so what kind of what instrument did you play? Uh, well, I, I play a variety of instruments, uh, but I also was in country music i re- did uh recording studios and recorded country music in nashville and that was another lifetime ago but uh it's part of the kind of who i am see i think that's very neat. I, I, see in another life i would have said oh we can do a live rendition tyler you can play major tom right now and we can do a little not jingle that, no i'm I not that good there, there's a reason i was on the recording side and not the instrument side because i'm not that good at it <laughs> now I, I do want to ask you this because i know you came from music but where did the space interest come on? Was that a childhood thing or did something occur that kind of said, Ooh, I want to go in this direction. What got uh, you into the space arena? Yeah. I'm more of an uh, entrepreneur, uh, like starting business. I've started several in my life and I grew up in an entrepreneur family. Uh, and so uh, how I got into space was a little bit accidental at the time we started the company with my uh, co-founders, he was in space. He was a software engineer. He had worked for some start- space startups and he wanted to start a company. And we knew each other through, you know, just various friends and stuff. And he took me over tacos and he told me about what CubeSats are and satellites. And he said, do you want to start a company? I said, you know, I don't know what those are. And he goes, yeah. I said, okay, let's do it. And, and here we are, you know, six, you know, seven years later or whatever. And, um, it's been a wild ride. It's been a lot of fun. Well, and I love that too, because you've really, I think, I, I would love to say this, is that you're disrupting the space sector as well. You know, I mean, I, I compare that, and you know, to the Elon Musk, the SpaceX kind of things. I mean, it's just thinking outside that little box that companies tend to put ourselves in. I, I think as an entrepreneur, you're able to say, hey, wait, you know, just because we've done this the same way for so long, doesn't mean we need to do it the same way anymore. Yeah. Uh, the space industry right now is going through quite a change just you know, just from an industry standpoint a lot of people like me who'd never been in the industry didn't didn't come up through school and getting a job as an intern and working our way up the we just come in and say there's a better way the rest of the world is benefiting from the cloud why can't space space should we should really start innovating and a lot of the focus has been on hardware innovation making things smaller making rockets cheaper reusable but i believe and a lot of people believe that if we're really going to accelerate our use in space it has to be done through software and so that we're doing our part through the cloud there's other ways to do software but that's really where the next evolution of, of disruption is going to come from See, I love that. And I do want to mention too, you guys have a wonderful uh, po- podcast for Cubos. It's called Ground Control Checking In. Um, yeah. I, I checked out a couple episodes on that. I think you just started that really. It's really good. That's right. One, one of the things I really liked about that is, you know, you mentioned how you're, you know, you're, you start up companies and one of the challenges, you know, it's been a challenging recent time with the pandemic and everything like that. Sure. But one thing that really uh, occurred to me to keep things positive is that you have engineers coming in, you have people coming into your company um, that have no space knowledge either. And you have to have the challenge of introducing them to the space sector. So how do you, that seems so overwhelming to me. How do you, how do you accomplish that? Where do you start? Oh, that's one of the most fun things I get to do, right? Is you get to have these people who have great careers, very talented in software development and who've always dreamed about space, been fascinated by space, never had the opportunity to get in. And now they have the opportunity to get in and they just eat it up. They just learn so much and they want to know everything. We also have people who grew up in the industry, right? Who This is what they've been doing. And so we pair them together and we create new ideas and new opportunities, but it's just really fun to see uh, these really talented engineers come in and with new ideas, new way of doing things, and then just absorb. They, I mean, they're just ec- ecstatic to be a part of this industry. See, that's wonderful too. And you mentioned too, before about, you know, the resistance with some, some customers and clients who sort of, who are your ideal customers out there? Yeah. So 
Right now, we're finding a lot of uh, traction with companies who are building constellations of satellites, like large number of satellites, getting started, uh, move, you know, starting in a cloud environment. Uh, and so they want to scale, they want to be able to move quickly. Uh, and so those are the big sectors of their commercial entities trying to you know, collect data to sell to other people. We're also finding success in, in more traditional industries or, or so more traditional aerospace, uh, but the angle is we can lower your costs, right? We get rid of all that expensive hardware and all those that staff you need to maintain all this. We can move you to the cloud and lower your costs, still give you the same performance, uh, and then also allow you to to do new ways uh, and, and create new processes. With uh, and so those are really the two angles that we're really going after right now. Okay, now I do want to ask this question, and feel free to tell me if this is, is going too far, but. Just as a software developer, um, and I know lots of software developers will be listening to this right now, um, we're intrigued by your, your cloud solution. Is there any way you can tell us just a little bit about the technologies you use just in a general sense? I'd love yeah. to share with the students, yeah. Yeah, so we built everything on Ruby on Rails. Uh, at least that's what the web application is built on top. We use Kubernetes uh, and InfluxDB as our database. Uh, we use heavily WebSocket APIs and JSON um as well as python we use a lot of different python especially on our scripting languages uh and we have a graphql api uh, so we're trying to bring some of these more modern new technologies and not just rely on c or something uh to to develop uh but we also have a lot of flexibility to uh integrating with our stack uh that you could use whatever language you want uh so we, we expose a lot over the apis really pushing the integrations angle yeah, I saw that your API documentation. It's, it's wonderful. I took a look at that too. Yeah. Um, so again, folks out there, if you're interested, kubos.com, that's K-U-B-O-S.com. Um, Tyler, I got to ask, what's next for Kubos? What's coming up? Well, we have more launches this year. Uh, so that's really <laughs> exciting. We're not done this year. Um, so we've been really focused on supporting these customers. We have a lot of feature development. We're, we're working on new features of our uh, mission planning. Uh, we integrate with a lot of different new systems. Uh, so it's just a lot of exciting activity on the development side of things. Wow, that's wonderful. Well, again, Tyler, we're very impressed with your company. I just wish you and the best. Thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, I really enjoyed my conversation with Tyler today, and I'm so excited for the future of space software in the cloud. I think that's incredible. I'm excited for the future of Kubos. If you'd like to learn more, just visit their website at kubos.com. That's K-U-B-O-S.com. I want to thank Tyler for joining me today. I want to thank you for joining us as well. Um, again, we'd love it if you'd leave a review on our site or if you'd share this episode with a friend. But either way, just thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. God bless.